ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله ارسله الله تعالى رحمه للعالمين فبلغ الرساله وادى الامانه ونصح الامه وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى اتاه اليقين من ربه فصلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين اخواني في الله اوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله العظيم قال الله عز وجل في كتابه يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون وقال سبحانه ولقد وصينا الذين اوتوا الكتاب من قبلكم واياكم ان اتقوا الله وقال جل جلاله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما واعلموا ان شر الامور محدثاتها وان كل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار I praise Allah who deserves all praises, bearing witness that there is no deity ever worthy of worship except Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad is a slave and messenger upon whom Allah had sent with blessings, mercy and guidance unto all mankind. I bear witness that he delivered the message, that he conveyed the message and he struggled the, up, the utmost struggle for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spread this deen and implemented, applied his will and spread this religion, this straight path until the day of judgment. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him and upon his companions and be aware that Every innovation is misguidance and every misguidance is in hell. Dear brothers, <coughs> if the Jew follow Musa, if the Jews, I don't say follow, if the Jews believed in Musa, they will disbelieve in Isa. If the Christians believed in Musa and Isa, their faith tells them to deny and disbelieve in Muhammad sallallahu alaihi The Jews, will, the, the Christians will say to the Jews, why don't you believe in Musa? Why not also in Isa? The Muslim says to both, why don't you believe in Muhammad? While we are out to believe in your two prophets. So under the banner of Muhammad Rasulullah, we have the condition of faith and, is, and that is to believe in all the prophets making no differences between them. Those, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, those who believe in some of the prophets and disbelieve in others, they are in fact the disbelievers in Allah and His messengers. And that is why we find in the Quran, for example, كَذَّبَتْ قَوْمُ لُوْطٌ الْمُرْسَلِينَ كَذَّبَتْ عَادٌ الْمُرْسَلِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that the people of Ad denied the messengers but they were denying their own messenger. This is an evidence that once a person disbelieves in one of the prophets he is disbeliever in all the prophets. So who 
is worthy to succeed with the description of tolerance. In the amid of the crisis of insulting the Prophet ﷺ, you do not find, in contrast, any Muslim that will be facing the insult with another insult to Musa or to Isa. Never. But uh, among the more civilized countries, you will find that. Insulting, burning their books, etc., etc., with very naive, silly kind of justification they give you. So, who is more civilized and more tolerant? It is the one who has the more correct doctrine. It seems that the Muslims understand well their doctrine as a base of faith. They never get out of it, no matter what. This is a practical evidence that they know their doctrine and they won't be facing this abuse and offense with a similar abuse and offense. But if they did, for defending the Prophet ﷺ, they will be disbelievers in the, in the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. They'll be disbelievers while they may claim but where do we find this? It's a rare case. And rare cases have no consideration and rulings. No consideration for rare cases. Saying that, because today we're going to make a Quranic tour with regards to the messengers of Allah. <coughs> we find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given an order to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to take all the previous Prophets as good example for him. Those are the ones who Allah has guided. So from their guidance take an example. Is there any need for relating some uh, cases or some attitudes or statements of the Prophet? Yes, there is. It's not only for us, it's even for the Prophet Muhammad When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَكُلَّنْ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ مِنْ أَنْبَاءِ الرُّسُلِ مَا نُثَبِّتُ بِهِ فُؤَادَكَ وَجَاءَكَ فِي هَذِهِ الْحَقُّ وَمَوْعِظَةٌ وَذِكْرَى لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ And each story we relate to you from the news of the messengers by which we strengthen your heart relating the stories of the prophets it is the means of strengthening the heart and there has come to you in this the truth and an instruction and a reminder for the believers. So let's make that tour within minutes. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us with the time. <coughs> the first good example is the statement that Allah by his mercy gave to Adam when he sinned. Allahu Akbar. Allah helped Adam to seek forgiveness but there was no help for the arrogant in his sin. And that is the devil. Adam sinned. And Allah helped him. To seek forgiveness and repentance. What was that statement? رَبَّنَا قَالَا رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ They said, our Lord, we have wronged against ourselves. And if you do not forgive us and have mercy upon us, we will surely be among the losers. He taught them and he approved their rem repentance. He taught them how rep to repent and he approved their repentance. Tabarakallahu Rabbul Alameen. Also, beautiful statement of the Prophet Shu'aib, which I always remember, subhanAllah. It's beautiful. As he was admonishing his people, among his statements was this statement وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ أُخَالِفَكُمْ إِلَى مَا أَنْهَاكُمْ عَنْهِ 
إن أريد إلا الإصلاح ما استطعت وما توفيقي إلا بالله عليه توكلت وإليه أنيب And I do not intend to go differently from that which I forbid you. That means to say, I'm not going to go to do what I forbid you. I'm not going to do it. It should be applied by me and you, both. And I do not intend to go differently from that which I forbid you. I only intend to reform as much as I can. And my help and support and success, success is not... But through Allah, upon Him I have relied, and to Him I return. <coughs> and another prophet, he said, إِنِّي أَخَافُ إِنْ عَصَيْتُ رَبِّي عَذَابَ يَوْمٍ عَظِيمٍ I fear if I sinned against my Lord a great chastisement at that day. Also a great statement. <coughs> at the moment of fitna, and what kind of fitness is this? Against the Prophet Yusuf السلام, Temptation, seduction. Not only this, but an order, obligation, that he should do what, what the wife of the king ordered him to do. Corruption. What did he say? He was intimidated of putting him in jail. What did he say? When he was threatened to be put in jail. Beautiful statement. <laughs> he said, Oh my Lord, you know that the prison is more beloved to me than the thing they are inviting me to do. But if you do not avert from me their plot, their plan, I may incline toward them and thus be of the, of the ignorance. <laughs> then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded his call and he averted him from their corruption. The beautiful thing here is saying that the jail is more beloved to me than the corruption they're inviting me to do. How beautiful is this? When you think it properly, and it's not easy, relating to you, this incident happened by the Prophet Musa, uh, uh, Yusuf, it is not easy to be resisted, especially in our, in our lifetime of corruption. It is true what people say that nowadays fornication is easier than a cup of water. And also when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored <coughs> Yusuf and eventually gathered him with his parents and his fathers, he was thanking Allah with this beautiful statement. رَبِّ قَدْ آتَيْتَنِي مِنَ الْمُلْكِ وَعَلَّمْتَنِي مِنْ تَأْوِيلِ الْأَحَادِيثِ فَاطِرَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ أَنْتَ وَلِيِّي فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ تَوَفَّنِي مُسْلِمًا وَأَلْحِقُنِي بِالصَّالِحِينَ How can they say that Muhammad is a false prophet? Look at this beautiful statement. O oh Lord, you have given me something of ownership, kingship, and taught me the revelation, the interpretation of revelations and visions. You are the creator of the heavens and the earth. You are my protector in this world and in the hereafter. Let my death come while I am submissive. I'm at the attitude of submission to you and join me with the companions of the righteous ones. Beautiful. What about Sulaiman? As he was hearing the speech of ants. Is this fable? Well, it's been explained recently by the uh, confession of scientists that yes, we recorded 
the voice and the chatting and the speech of ants to one another. So, as Sulaiman salam heard the ants speaking, calling one another, that the army of Sulaiman may crush you while they do not perceive. perceive. When he heard that from the ant, what did he say? Rabbi awza'ni an ashkura ni'matakal lati an'amta alayya wa ala walidayy wa an a'mala salihan tarudah wa adkhilni bi rahmatika fi ibadika salihin Oh my Lord, help me to be grateful for your favor which you bestowed upon me and upon my parents and to do righteousness of which you be pleased with. You know how important is this statement? That I do the righteous work that you are pleased with. It's not only, it's not enough that you do a good thing, but is, uh, uh, had it been approved by Allah? Because deeds, even the good deeds, have some conditions to be approved and accepted. I love that specific word tarda that I do good deed that you are pleased with and admit me by your mercy into the ranks of your righteous servants beautiful stories beautiful points beneficial today we are benefited that we don't only do the good but we seek to apply the conditions of the good deed so it will be accepted. Allahu Akbar. What about Ibrahim alayhi salam when he said, وَلَا تُخْزِنِي يَوْمَ يُبْعَثُونَ يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ And do not disgrace me. And do not disgrace me on the day they are all resurrected. The day when they will, nothing will be beneficial. Neither, neither children, nor property, except one who comes to Allah with a sound heart. And I like what Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah said, that when the devil knew that the whole salvation is based on this heart. He attacked that heart with all his whisperings and doubts in order to spoil that flesh which is set, built in, in the body of human people, a humankind. If this flesh is spoiled, so therefore you have to make a preparation for that heart. Make sure you meet Allah the day of judgment while your heart is sound from shirk, from enviness, from hypocrisy, from all kind of diseases that may cause even eventually the heart to die. What, what a beautiful statement. What a beautiful ayah. In this, there is a great lesson that we can grasp from this statement of Ibrahim alayhi salam. I will say this and I will forgive you for you and for all the believers from every sin, so forgive him, for he is the Most Gracious. Alhamdulillah. وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Also among the beautiful things that happened with this Ibrahim, that Allah tested him. It's a test over test over test to Ibrahim عليه الصلاة والسلام. And one of the tests is that he saw in the vision that he is to slay his son Ismail. He came to Ismail and he said to him, I have seen such and such in the dream. So see what you can do. He said, my father, do whatever Allah orders you to do. You will find me, insha'Allah, among those who hold fast, those patient. 
That is also, in this day, is a great lesson that submission is not, is not uh, something you write on your ID and that's all. It's a practice. It's a word of practice. That's why when the father was ready to slay and the son is ready to be slayed, suddenly Allah said, Falamma aslama, when they both submitted. This is the Islam, is to, to be submissive and obedient to the command of Allah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala substituted Ismail with the sheep, as you know. So subhanAllah, in this also there is there is a great lesson. And also in the Tawheed of Ibrahim, he was put in the fire. And Jibreel came to him, saying to him, do you have a need? If that happened to one of us, we may say, yes, don't you see what I'm suffering? Do something. What did he say? When Jibreel said to him, do you have a need? He said, as from you, no. But as from Allah, hasbi Allah wa ni'mal Sufficient Allah is for me, and he's the best one to trust. Who said it after Ibrahim? Companions of the Prophet Sallallahu when hypocrites said to them, Watch out, people are preparing and gathering against you, so fear them. But it increased their faith when they were told that their enemies are preparing themselves to them. That caused their faith to be increased. Subhanallah, instead of having fear and concerns, it increased their faith. And they said, Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. So this is, this is also a good lesson for us to be taken. Also the strengthening, the steadiness of Musa alayhi salam. When he and his people were in the sea, and Fir'aun and his soldiers were chasing them. And each one of the two companies were seeing one another. And the people of Musa said, we are overtaken. We're caught up. we finished. He said, Kalla, inna ma'ya rabbi sayahdeen. He said, no. I have my Lord with me. He will guide me. Steadiness in faith. How much we need that in our time of fitan that we are facing and encountering. Also, if we need tawheed to know something, tawheed that we need to deliver it to the non-Muslims, to those who worship Isa. There is a beautiful statement from Isa that we have to convey and deliver to them. And that's what Isa said, alayhi salatu wasalam. وَقَالَ الْمَسِيحُ يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ عَبُدُ اللَّهَ رَبِّي وَرَبَّكُمْ إنه من يشرك بالله فقد حرم الله عليه الجنة ومأواه النار وما للظالمين من أنصار. But Isa said, I said to Salam, O people of Israel, worship Allah, my Lord, and your Lord. For whoever sets up partners with Allah, Allah had already made Jannah forbidden on him, and his and his abode will be at the day of judgment, the fire. And for the wrongdoers, there is no one to help. A lot of beautiful statements and attitudes of the prophets. And the last one among them is when Yunus was fed up with his people because of their stubbornness and rebellion. He decided to leave them and go. But he was disciplined by Allah. And you know the story. When the whale swallowed him, what was his statement in the belly of the whale? La ilaha illa. He is acknowledging the tawheed of Allah. First, that's the adab or supplication. La ilaha illa. Then he exalted him in honor, the highest honor, saying, Subhanak. Then he submitted his knee to Allah. Inni kuntu min al Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him. But Allah said something beautiful in the ayah. وَكَذَلِكَ نُنْجِي الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And thus we save the believers. So this supplication given from Yunus to Allah is a supplication that we should be giving also to Allah if we need salvation from Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. هذا وصل وسلم على خير النبي وأكرم هاد فقد أمركم ربكم عز وجل بذلك فقال جل من قائل عليم 
ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وال ابراهيم وبارك على محمد وال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وال ابراهيم في العالمين انك حميد مجيد اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات برحمتك يا أرحم الرحمين اللهم إنا نسألك العفو والعافية والمعافاة الدائمة في الدين والدنيا والآخرة اللهم أصلح لنا ديننا الذي هو عصمة أمرنا وأصلح لنا دنيانا التي فيها معاشنا وأصلح لنا آخرتنا التي إليها معادنا واجعل الحياة زيادة لنا في كل خير واجعل الموت راحة لنا من كل شر اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من زوال نعمتك ومن فجاءة نقمتك ومن تحول عافيتك ومن جميع سخطك يا رب العالمين ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا عليك توكلنا وإليك أنبنا اللهم فاغفر لنا ما قدمنا وما أخرنا أنت المقدم وأنت المؤخر لا إله إلا أنت وأنت على كل شيء قدير وأقم الصلاة